And welcome back to day five of Ravnica, or Ravnica Allegiant spoilers. We've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Let's get into it. We've got the headliners. we got a Mythic Angel and another Story Spotlight card. Uh, Angel of Grace is three white, three bending color for a Mythic Angel. It's our Mythic Rare white card. Flash Flying 5-4. When it enters the battlefield, until the end of turn, damage that will reduce your life points to less than one, i.e. zero, would <clears throat> instead only reduce it to one. And... You can pay three, uh, two white, four of any color, remove the exile this card from your graveyard, and your life total becomes ten. This is just a good card. I mean, it's it's a 5-4 five, for five, five with flying. That alone is playable. You can flash it in. You can uh, prevent you can prevent yourself from dying for at least a turn. Um, and even if this thing does die, it, you can re-bump your life. Now, it's not a huge bump. It's not like a restarting life total like with uh, Oketra's Last Mercy. But it's definitely a really, it's a really good card. It's it's a very good card, honestly. Now that said, though, there is a catch-22 with the card. And the catch-22 is this. Um, if you're flashing it in, any damage you would take, you're, if you're flashing it in, chances are you are already in a scenario where you might be get close to losing your life. So you'll at least be at one. Problem is, if this, if this thing, if you're in a scenario where this thing hits the graveyard from the field, you're probably already dead. Um, there, there's not a lot of ways that you stay alive unless you got uh, some other life prevention or whatnot, um, or just life game or enough blockers to block whatever um, someone's throwing at you. But yeah, you're you're in a bit of a you're in a bit of a bad bind if this thing hits the graveyard from the field because. Normally speaking, you'd probably play it for its flash and for its ability to save you effect. Unless you just want to get some damage, in which case, go right ahead. Uh, Syndicate Guildmage was spoiled yesterday. Uh, it was one, a couple, it, that and a few other cards were spoiled yesterday. I didn't get to them in time. Uh, one white, one black, two of any color for a human cleric, uncommon. Tap one white and one of any color, uh, or excuse me, one white, one of any color, tap this card. Target creature with power four greater, tap target creature, power four greater. Uh, four of any color and one black. Tap this card. Deals two damage to target opponent or planeswalker. It's a good to guild mage. It works well for the um, set, uh, guild it's in. Absolutely it does. Uh, Ministrate of Obligation is one white, two of any color for a 2-1. Afterlife, two. Human Cleric, uncommon. Another good card. Particularly because it's a small guy for Afterlife, two. So this is a guy that you have no problem trading with. <clears throat> it, it's a good card. You'll, you'll use, you'll see it in all the white decks, pretty much, or at least in the limited environment and other environments. Uh, Orzhov Racketeers, one black, four of any color for a three-two human rogue with afterlife two, and when it deals combat damage to a player, they discard a card. Not as good as the Ministrate of Obligation, but still a pretty solid card. Um, it's expensive though for what it's doing. Yeah, you get two bodies, which ultimately means you've got between this and two bodies. 5-4, uh, which is, I mean, gray, but it's between three bodies, technically speaking. Uh, and two of them have flying. I don't know, it's not as good as the Ministry, but it's it's not bad. It's not bad, especially if you're doing the afterlife thing. Archway Angel, one white, five of any color. Um, for an angel, uncommon, 3-4. When it enters the battlefield, you gain two life for each gate you control. It'd be great for the gate deck I'm making, but let's not kid ourselves here. If like, you're not in a gate stack, or if you're not playing a lot of gates, at best you might be getting four life on this thing coming down as a 3-4 flyer for six. See, a 3-4 flyer for five, that's pretty okay. Six is starting to push it, and the effect only, it, it will give you a brief boost if you have gate. If you don't even have gates on the field, this thing, it, it, there's no point to this thing. Uh, but it's not the worst. It's definitely a lower tier uncommon, though, definitely. Immolation Shaman, one red, one of any color for a 1-3. Vashino Shaman, don't see a lot of Vashinos, uh, usually. One rare, or I said one rare. Vashino Shaman, rare card. When an opponent activates an ability of an artifact creature or land that isn't a mana ability, this card deals one damage to that player. Uh, you can pay three of any color, two red. This card gets plus three, plus three, and menace until the end turn. So essentially, you're turning it into a, oddly enough, a 4-6. Interesting. 4-6 of Menace. So, I mean, honestly, just for that ability alone, for 5, you can turn it into a 4-6 a with Menace. If that's all you got, great. Um, it's it's 
definitely kind of makes your opponent second guess a couple of their choices, definitely. But I don't know. I mean, as a two one for three with those abilities, it has nothing but benefit abilities. It's a good card. I just don't know how practical overall it is. Because uh, it's pretty much just going to be sitting and blocking, and then it may end up dying at some point. Until you can pump it up to a 4-6. In which case, you're probably in a Gruul deck, which just technically is not a Gruul card. As far as I can tell, no watermark. But it would kind of be in a Gruul deck, maybe a Rakdos deck. In those decks, you'd want to be aggressive. So, I, I don't know. But I, I know, I've heard a lot of people liking the card. Salamander Drake. This is a fun one for me. Uncommon Salamander Drake, creature type. Um, one blue, one one flying with adapt eight, one blue and seven. However, this adapt cost costs one less to activate for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. This is a fun little card. I really, I really like this card. Now, in say an adapt deck like a, a Simic deck, you're gonna have a little bit more trouble getting the that adapt cost down a much lower. Um, but it's not impossible by any stretch of the means. Uh, I mean, they Simic has its own share of uh, sorceries and it's his spells. One second, you need to go outside. Okay, you go outside. Uh, yeah, you go outside. Uh, so, ooh, I think there might be a skunk out there. Be careful, puppy. Do not get skunked. Woo, yeah. Oh God, they're, they're, I'm gonna have to take a look around there in a little bit. Uh, whoo, that's that's wafting. Wow. Um, so salamander, yeah. So. Uh, in your normal kind of Simic deck, I don't expect um, a lot in the way of um, uh, of instant. I mean, but three or four instances in the graveyard for this guy isn't unreasonable, which means you would bring down the adapt cost at most to maybe a four and a blue, which honestly turning that into a five five flyer for four uh, for um, four mana altogether. What I was trying to get out with that. That's not bad. And then you go into like the is it decks. Definitely going to, uh, stinky, stinky out there. <laughs> there was a skunk out there. You didn't get skunked, did you? Let me smell you. No, you're fine. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a good card overall. That's the general point I was trying to get at. Uh, let's see here. A tire and a tract. I believe that's right. Uh, yeah, a tire and tract. A tire, uh, split card, rare. A tire is hybrid mana, red and black. Two. For a rare card, tar rare instant, target creature gets plus three, minus three, ooh, excuse me, until the end of turn. Attract is Rakdos, red and black, four of any color for an instant rare. Destroy target, non-basic land, the uh, perform deals, what? Attract, perform deals two damage to target opponent or, pl or planeswalker. This must have been spoiled in non-English, because I've got a tire and a tract here, but it then says destroy target non-basic land, perform deals two damage to... Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, someone must have gotten the name wrong on that, because that makes no sense. Uh, and it, it perform, there's no there's nothing that says perform under. There's no name. Anyway, just two damage to uh, that uh, target opponent or planeswalker. Anyway, um, both are fine. Uh, the attract's going to be a little... Or perform... Uh, the biggest part of the spell is going to be a little difficult to get off sometimes. Not even in terms of mod, just in terms of the situation. Yeah, you can destroy a g gate, sure, but it ultimately, is it worth six mana to destroy one land at the point when you can play this, especially in a black and red deck that doesn't have mana uh, acceleration very often? Um, let's just say it's best you get it out on turn six. They're already going to have either five or six mana, so you're not going to put them behind very uh much and they are just going to do two damage uh not that being said if you're in already in a rakdos deck you're um you're already probably ahead hopefully so it's possible speaking of which cult gill mage is rakdos two two uh, black and a red uncommon human shaman pay three and one black target player discards a card activates the time activate as a sorcery or pay one red tap this card deal one damage target opponent or planeswalker it's basically exactly what you want in a Rakdos Guild Mage. It's going to be able to ping for damage, and it discards a little bit. Um, it's a it's a fine Guild Mage for the colors it's in. Warrant and Warden. Uh, Warrant, put target attacking or blocking creature on top of its owner's library. Again, hybrid mana, two of each, uh, white and blue. Target attacking or block creature. That's good. It's a good stopper. Warden, uh, 
one blue, one white, three of any color, and sorcery rare. Create a 4-4 four, four white and blue Sphinx creature token with flying and vigilance. I think I actually like the warden part of this more, the expensive part, due to the fact that if you have a, st a board, with, uh, or if you have nothing on the board, that's going to be the more useful. Um, it gives you a body, it gives you a solid body. You know, 4-4 four, four flying vigilance for six mon or 5 mana is a solid uh, effect. But it all depends on the circumstance, really, because war warrant will probably be better when you actually have to react to something. Whereas this, if you're planning out something, the warden will be better. Uh, Senate Gilmage again, Azorius colors, white and blue. Two two human wizard. Tap one blue white and or excuse me, white tap this gain two life. Blue tap this draw a card, discard a card. Again, doing exactly what you wanted to be doing in that color. Uh, it, it's a fine guild mage. Uh, Thrash and Threat. Thrash is one red, high, or excuse me, Gruel Hybrid 2 mana. Uh, target creature you control deals damage to tar equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. Threat basically puts a 4-4 four, four boar creature token with trample onto the battlefield for the price of Gruel and two of extra mana. Um, both are good if you got nothing on the board and you need to swing in. The boar will do great. Uh, it doesn't say a riot, though. If it said a riot, then you'd really have something there. Uh, Thrash is great when you do have something big or even something small and want to deal damage to someone. So, yeah, both these are good. Both these are solid. Uh, ben Benthic Biomancer. One blue uh, for a 1-1 one, one Human Wizard Mutant Rare. Adapt one uh, for one blue and one of any color. Whenever you put one or more counters on this card, draw a card, discard a card. A lot of looting going on here. Um, and it's a good card. Good, it's a good adapt card. Uh, you can get out of turn one and do the whole adapt, make it a two two on turn two if you need to. If not, it's still good late game. It'll act like a spell. It's a good card. It's solid. I probably wouldn't. I mean, if I need the one drops, definitely I'll use it. You know, move counters around and you know siphon through my deck. Great, but I would say I'd probably use like the Drake over this. Uh, it's also a one one, but it all automatically has evasion, so it does make it more proactive than this uh and it's it, it's a dap may take a while to get to but ultimately it, it's not that bad uh awaken the erstwhile through uh two back what is that? two black three of any color for a rare sorcery each player discards all the cards in their hand and then creates that many two two black zombie creature tokens if you're dealing in a deck that is discards your opponent hand, what is that? opponent's hand this card's going to be better for you that way you can hold on to your hand and um you know, make the zombies. That said, though, I'll be honest. I, as much as I can, I have a couple zombie decks. At least, I know I have one major zombie deck and other decks that use a solid amount of zombies. I'll be honest, though. I'm not big on getting rid of all my resources unless they have effects that uh, have, react to going to the graveyard. So, unless that's the case, I'm not big on, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, Angel of Grace, two white. Oh, I already talked about Angel of Grace, sorry. Revival and Revenge. Revenge. Uh, two, uh, again, Revival, two hybrid Orzhov mana for a sorcery rare. Return target creature card would convert a mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's recursion. You're going to get something pretty much for two mana. If, if not, nothing else, something three mana for two mana or lower. So you're, you're going to get your value out of that. Revenge is the one I find more unique, uh, more up my alley, honestly, though. Revenge is uh, Orzov and four extra mana for six altogether. Sorcery rare. Double your total life, and the target opponent loses half their life rounded down, rounded up. Look, I just think that's a fun ability. Call, call me crazy. That's just a fun ability. Um, so, I, look, it, it, the, at six mana, at best, you're playing, earliest you're playing on a turn six because... Again, white and black, not very good mana producers. Though you, you might, might, like with a locket maybe, get yeah, on turn five. So let's hypothetically say turn five. At that point, some blows have probably been traded. You might be down a little bit of life. They might be down a little life. Even if you're both, let's say, at 15 life, double your life, go to 30. They suddenly go down to, what, round it up? So seven? No, round eight. Eight. Um, yeah, that, that makes it totally worth it. <laughs> Now, granted, I will say, if you could somehow play this when they had more life, the amount they go down to will dra be more drastic. But ultimately, yeah, I, I will say that. I dig the card. I would certainly use that card. Absolutely. Uh, Windstorm Drake. Flying. 3-3 uh, three, three Drake for one blue, four of any color. Other creatures you control with flying get plus one, plus oh. 
a solid card that functions uh, like that. Uh, there was a card similar to that in the previous Return to Ravnica set, or block, I should say. Uh, it it kind of worked on the same uh, principle. It was a Drake. I think I have a couple of copies that with plus one counters, the creatures got a plus one or got plus one plus one and flying. Basically, a similar card, just not quite as powerful. If I'm going to be honest, uh, Sp uh, Spirit of the Spires, one white, three event color for a, uh, for a spirit, <coughs> flying two four. Other creatures you control with flying get plus oh plus uh, one. So basically, your boost. Basically, these are two sides of the same coin. I'm almost certain these are both um, Orzhov cards, probably. Her breath is a breeze that relieves tired griffins and lifts the birds so they can wander, uh, so that wandering cats can't reach them. Um, more or less, because they don't have the images where I'm looking right now for the card. They have the description. The images will probably be up later tomorrow or something. Uh, yeah, so these are probably both, they're both the mirrored halves of each other. Uh, I will say, though, that the Spirits of the spire, uh, Spires are probably the more usable cards. The usable of the two, it's cheaper. Two forts got a bigger butt, so it can actually last against some better removal. Uh, now, and if you have them both on the field, you'll instead have a... 3-4 and a... I get it. They both become 3-4s. I get it. Uh, ultimately, though, I think the Spirit's a little better. Uh, Arrestor's uh, a Domination. Uh, one blue, two of any color for an instant common. Return target creature to its owner's hand. And an addendum, if you cast during your main phase, draw a card. It's removal. Well, it's bounce removal, but it's removal. Uh, I don't know. I just... I don't... I'm not big on... Some of the addendum cards are good. Some of them are good. Addendum, I think, is the weakest mechanic, though. It's just meh. That's basically what it is, meh. Uh, so that's, I mean, that's my thought. And this is okay. Um, drawing a card if you feel like spending, playing it during your main phase is fine. Uh, Azorius Skyguard. Uh, two, uh, Azorius in four of any color for a 3-3 three, three human knight flying first strike and creatures your opponent's control get minus one, minus O. Oh. It's a card with value, 3-3 three, three for 6, as I was saying, on its own flying is a bit pricey, particularly in double mana, uh, double colors anyway. But at first strike, you then put value on it, and then your opponent's creatures are losing minus 1, minus 0. Granted, their toughness isn't lower, but you know what? Take it where you can get it. That, I think, is a good card. That's a solid Azorius card right there. And I think that's basically how Azorius kind of should act. It's stopping creatures or preventing creatures from doing more than they want them to do. Uh, last but not least, another story spotlight card, and this one is also in Orzov. Ethereal Absolution. One, uh, excuse me, Orzov plus four, so six mana altogether. Uh, enchantment rare. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and creatures your opponent controls get minus one, minus one. You can also pay two in Orzov, four altogether. Exile target creature card, or excuse me, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. And if it's a creature card, you create a 1-1 one, one white and black spirit creature token. Uh, Kaya said to Tes uh, Tasha, uh, time to let the dead be dead. Um, because we know she's going to come and absurp the uh, Orza. I guess this, I guess it turns the story uh, spotlights. But uh, I'll get to that in just a second. Overall, the card, six miles a lot, but you know what? That's a good effect. It's got two relevant effects. It's already beefing your board, lowering their board. And then you can make more creatures to fill up your board and be big. So your spirits, while this card is out, are going to be two two flyers when they pop out. That is relevant. Uh, that 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 is relevant. And anything else you put out is going to be increased. So let's just assume for a second you're going to play. Uh, I'm just uh, trying to find some small Orzhov creatures here. Oh, let's say you play Orzhov Racketeer. That's now a four or three, uh, and that with afterlife too. Mistrain of Obligation is now a, th a three two for three with afterlife too. It just, it's value. It's good. Now, in terms of the story spotlight, like where it takes place in the story, I think I'm starting to get an idea of where story, the story's kind of uh, being set up. I think what happens is Kaya observes the Orzov first, kills the Orzov, or uh, the Obsidite, uh, takes over Orzov, releases the spirits. Then, right now, then after that, at some point, it's going to be uh, Rampage of the Clans from um, Domir. Or dumber, and then we get uh, emergency powers from Dovin. So I think that might be the order the story's going in right now, but we won't know because they haven't even brought the started the story yet of Ravnica, uh, even from uh, Guilds of Ravnica. They haven't even started that yet, so we'll see what happens there. But that's my thoughts on today's cards. I'm sure a couple more might get spoiled, but I'm done for today. 
Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. As always, if you want us to review something, put in the comments below. Let us know. We'll do a review of it at some point. I just will really win. Star Wars, Superior, Magic, What If, anything I'll do on the channel. Put in the comments below. Let me know. I'll do a review of it at some point. Um, uh, I will be back actually with one more video today because Tuesday's a bit of a lazy day for me. I don't normally do stuff outside of the weeks of the week ofs. But I figured, and I do have to pre-record my other videos for tomorrow. But I figured I haven't done a discussion video in a while, so I'll put a discussion up uh, a little later. Till then, though, thank you for watching, and I'll see you.